Assalamu alaikum and good morning dear students. I hope so that you all are fine and are staying safe as well. I welcome you all in another lesson of Google Classroom and I hope so that you people have done your previous task quite well. So I'm sure that you people have read the textbook pages 61 to 62 and a half that we read in the previous lesson. So today we are going to do the written work of the same pages that is of 61 till 62 and a half. So what is our learning objective for today? So today we are going to reinforce the topic through written work. So what we have read in the previous topic, that, uh, in the previous lesson that we are going, uh, we are going to do the written work of that, those pages. Okay, so uh, before we are going to start our written work for today, first of all, let's discuss uh, what we have read, read in the previous lesson. So as you people already have this idea that we have started the topic, the Makkan life of our beloved Prophet Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And every day we people, uh, we people learn something new about his life as a Prophet. So we discovered uh, one by one the, uh, the life of Holy Prophet as a Prophet according to, uh, with reference to his uh, Prophethood years. And we have started the topic from the early years of Prophethood. We have learned about how the first revelation revealed on Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when Angel Jibreel uh, came, with him, uh, came and uh, asked Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to read with the name of Allah the Almighty. And uh, the first verses that were revealed on Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu were the first five verses of Surah Al-Alaq and then we discussed the, about the early years of prophethood that the, it was very difficult for Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu to openly preach Islam uh, by the order of Allah the Almighty Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu kept it sacred and very few people know about uh, about this thing that Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu is the prophet of Allah the Almighty and then we discussed this thing that the first person that uh, that accepted Islam was Hazrat Khadija Razitala Anha, who was uh, the wife of Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and she was the same person to whom Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went when Jibreel Islam came to Holy Prophet for the very first time. And Hazrat Khadija took uh, him to Warka bin Nafil, who was a cousin of Hazrat Khadija. And Warka bin Nafil told Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that the same thing was happened with Hazrat Musa and Hazrat Isa Alaihi Salam. So that means that Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the next prophet of Allah the Almighty and after that uh, Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq Anha, who was a very close friend of Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so he accepted Islam and after that Hazrat Ali Razitala Anha uh, who was the cousin of Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the son of Hazrat Abu Talib uh, he accepted Islam and after that uh, his former slave uh, Hazrat uh, Hazrat Zaid bin Harissa, he accepted Islam. So these are some of the few people that accepted Islam uh, in the early years of prophethood. And there are total 10 number of people who accepted Islam in the first three years of prophethood. So after that, Allah the Almighty, uh, Allah the Almighty said to Holy Prophet to invite all the family members of Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to have a meal with Holy Prophet and Holy Prophet did that. And that meal was known as Dawat al Shira, which means uh, the first four relatives and in this meal only two things were served meat and milk and after the meal Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa wasallam told everyone that he is he were he is the prophet of Allah the almighty and Allah the almighty sent the message to everyone to preach only one Allah to accept one Allah to worship one Allah the almighty and uh, all the family members of holy prophet didn't like this thing and nobody accepted Islam except his cousin who was uh, who was Hazrat Ali Razitala Anha only he accepted Islam and uh, after that Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa sallam was ordered by Allah the Almighty to preach Islam openly uh, in Makkah and Holy Prophet invited all the peoples, uh, people of Makkah to accept the oneness of Allah the Almighty uh, when he, uh, he uh, did a sermon on Mount Safa which was in Makkah uh, but none uh, none of the people of uh, Makkah accepted Islam even uh, Abu Lahab who was the, who was also the cousin of Holy Prophet peace be upon him sorry who was also the uncle of uh, Holy Prophet peace be upon him he deserted Holy Prophet he abused Holy Prophet Nawaz Billah and uh, after that nobody accepted Islam but uh, with this thing, Allah the Almighty permit the Holy Prophet to preach Islam openly to outside the Makkah from all those people who came from outside the Makkah for the trading to or for uh, 
to uh, to do hajj uh, at makkah at that time uh, as pe- you people already have idea that in khana kaaba the idols were placed so people from all over the world they used to come to uh, for the hajj uh, of the idols so a uh, holy prophet started preaching islam openly to the people and uh, after that the islam it uh, went away out of makkah to all over the world uh, then we discuss in detail about what happened in fourth year of prophethood and here we discuss about the strong determination and strong will of prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam and his companions razi taala anha and we discuss th- this thing in detail that hazrat muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam started to preach islam openly and the non believers began to harass him uh, harass holy prophet peace be upon him in all kind of ways uh, they would abuse him on the streets call him now's billah a mad man uh, whenever holy prophet is uh, reciting the holy quran they started to distract holy prophet by screaming loudly uh, they he, they didn't let holy prophet pray uh, pray nicely or openly openly so in spite of all this pain and torture on holy prophet peace be upon him he still remained steadfast upon the path of allah the almighty uh finally the chieftains of quraish uh, who were against holy prophet they went to his paternal uncle hazrat abu talib and complained about holy prophet but holy prophet didn't listen to them as well after that they also decide, they also decided to bribe holy prophet and everything got in vain nothing worked for them uh, after that what they came up with an idea that they started uh they started torturing the companions of holy prophet uh, who were accepting islam like he used to torture they used to torture hazrat bilal razi taala anha hazrat khabab bin alarad razi taala anha hazrat usman gani razi taala anha and hazrat amar bin yasir razi taala anha so everything got in vain nothing happened nothing worked for the non believers because all these uh, companions they were so steadfast uh, in for the path of allah the almighty and they were so steadfast to do anything uh, for allah the almighty and every time when they are uh, when they are torturing those companions they always used to say ahad ahad which means allah is one so after seeing all these uh, cruel brutality of the non believers as it was getting worse day by day Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam he advised uh, the Muslims to migrate to Abyssinia and remain there until the things didn't settle over here in Mecca so for the very first time 15 uh, people who uh, 15 Muslims went to for Abyssinia and inclu- including 11 men and 4 women and they started living in Abyssinia uh, in the capital of, of Abyssinia which is Aksum which is also the capital of the king Najashi of Abyssinia So here these people they started living here for like only 3 months and they were misinformed by someone that the non believers of Makkah had uh, converted to Islam so they returned back to their homes so as soon as they returned back to Makkah again the same brutal treatment started hence the holy prophet once again uh, advised the muslims to migrate to abyssinia and this time a large number of people including 80 men and 19 women they left for Makkah and settled perfectly peacefully in abyssinia so this was happened in the 6th year of prophethood So in the sixth year of prophethood, when uh, the non-Muslim believers they saw they didn't uh, bear this thing that the Muslims were living very peacefully in Abyssinia, so they went, uh, they make a plan and they went to Najashi, two of the chieftains of Quraysh, uh, named as Abdullah bin Abi Rabi and Omar bin As. They went to King Najashi to bribe him, and w- they wanted to uh, took back those people, uh, those innocent people, with them. but nothing worked for them here as well as najashi he didn't let them uh, he didn't let uh, the, he didn't let those muslims uh, go with uh, the non believers because najashi was so moved by the verses of holy quran that hazrat jafar tayyar who was a, who was also the cousin of hazrat muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam and the brother of hazrat ali razi taala anha so najashi didn't let uh, those people to go to makkah and uh, the non believers returned back to makkah and their mission had failed miserably so after that in the 6th year of prophet or two main things happened as hazrat hamza razi taala anha and hazrat um, umar farooq razi taala anha they accepted islam and they were it, it was a turning point of um, it was a turning point for the muslims because these two brave uh, companions of hazrat muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam they accepted islam and hazrat hamza was also the paternal uncle of hazrat uh, muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam and he was very brave same goes for hazrat umar farooq razi taala anha and uh, this was a game changer for the muslims and for the islam as well because b- because of these two um, brave leaders so many people accepted islam with them 
in the sixth year of prophet or najashi also accepted islam and uh, he when he died his uh, final prayers were offered by hazrat muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam in his absence so this these three uh, these all events took place in a uh, sixth year of prophethood so now in the seventh year of prophethood the non believers were so enraged by the increasing number of the muslims and so they decided that they decided they make another plan and they decided that the family of hazrat muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam which were the tribes of banu hashim and banu mutlim they have to desert holy prophet peace be upon him they have to draw, withdraw their support from hazrat muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam uh, uh, and if they didn't do this thing they have to follow the charter which was known as muqattai quraish and in muqattai quraish they put the three uh, terms which which are no trading buying selling or uh, brighter would be done with these two tribes no marriages would be arranged with them and no one uh, no one would meet them or communicate with them in any way and uh, this was hung this mukata was hung on the wall of khana kaaba uh, and it was hap- it was uh, done on first muharram uh, in the seventh year of prophethood and all the chieftains of the tribe of quraish they signed this uh, charter so when this thing happened has the, the paternal uncle of holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam hazrat abu talib he uh, he advised the muslims to leave makkah and started living uh, in makkah he advised the family of hazrat muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam those that were the tribes of banu hashim and banu mutlim to move out of makkah and started living in a valley known as sheib abi talib which was near to makkah so they started living uh, in sheib abi talib and on this on this event uh, has uh, on this event abu lahab the prophet's non believing paternal uncle he didn't support and accompany his kith and kin in fact uh, he supported the non believers and didn't go with the people to live in makkah so the non believers they were so strict in obeying the rules and the regulations uh, that they would not even allow the food and the water to reach the valley hence the supplies of food and water uh, were soon exhausted and the little children they started to weep and cry suffering from hunger and a thirst so uh, the cousin of hazrat khadija razi taala anha hakim bin hazam tried to uh, try to deliver some food and water to the, the family of holy prophet peace be upon him secretly but non believers saw him and badly tortured him and in this whole uh, in this way 3 years of 3 long years in the valley of sheba bi talib passed away okay so then we finally uh, move towards the 10th year of prophethood and it means at this in this year holy prophet turned 50 years old uh, because he got prophethood at the age of 40 so now holy prophet was 50 years old and he was in the 10th year of his prophethood and uh, we learned this thing in the previous lesson about how the muqattai quraish ended uh, in the 10th year of prophethood so as i already told you about this thing that has uh, allah the almighty didn't uh, able to see the sufferings of the muslims so he decided to help the muslims so how has allah the almighty helped the muslims uh, one thing over here muslims were so uh having so much faith in allah the almighty that he would he will help him uh, because allah the almighty basically testing the patience of the muslims testing the patience of hazrat muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam and the family of hazrat muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam so uh, what uh, so now allah the almighty decided to help the muslims so how he decided to help muslims uh, he informed uh, hazrat muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam that termites termites is, is an insect that eat the paper and the wood so he dis- he uh, informed them he informed holy prophet that termites had destroyed the document of muqattai quraish and only the word allah remained in that document so hazrat muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam uh, gave this news to his uncle hazrat abu talib so hazrat abu talib he immediately went to the kaaba and told uh, about this thing to the chieftains of quraish so that and he also said to them that if my nephew hazrat muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam uh, like no he told them that my nephew muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam had told mean that termites have destroyed the document uh, this uh, termites had destroyed your document so get it and have a look at it if muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam is proved wrong i will hand him over to you and he will not spread the message of allah around the world he will give up on his religion he will give up give up on the oneness of allah the almighty and he will do what you people wanted him to do because this is actually the thing that non believers want from hazrat muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam and again uh, the abu talib said that if he proved right you will have to end this uh, charter as soon as uh, 
charter immediately so uh, the chieftains of Quraysh they immediately sent uh, someone to get the charger from the Kaaba and every single word that Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa said uh, uh, proved to be correct so the chieftains they were so ashamed and embarrassed and thus uh, in this way the charter of Mughatai Quraysh ended and the people of Banu Quraysh and uh, the people of Banu Hashim and Banu Muslim they returned back to Mecca uh, so the Muslims of uh, so the Muslims they returned back to Mecca after spending three painful years and distressed years in Shab Abi Talib. So, so uh, the Muslims they got freedom. The family of Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam they got freedom in the tenth year of prophethood. So after spending three years in Shab Abi Talib. So in the valley of Shab Abi Talib, the Muslims uh, survived by eating the leaves and the roots of trees, which was very painful, and uh, they. Uh, so in the same year, Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa sallam suffered two big losses, two great losses, which caused him a very deep grief. And that's why the uh, tenth year of prophethood is known as the year of grief. Why it is known as the year of grief? Because uh, the first uh, uh, the first loss that Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa sallam have to bear is was the death of his beloved uncle Hazrat Abu Talib. And from his childhood to his youth, Hazrat Abu Talib had always uh, guarded and defended Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa sallam everywhere. He was the only support of Hazrat Muhammad uh, at that time when no one supported him, and he never allowed anyone to hurt Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa sallam. And from his childhood, uh, Hazrat Abu Talib always supported him, always uh, like like a father figure to Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa sallam because uh, Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, lost his uh, mother at the age of 6 and after that Hazrat Abu Talib took the responsibility and again Hazrat Abu Talib uh, Hazrat Abdul Muttalib took the responsibility <coughs> And Hazrat Abu Abdul Muttalib also died when Holy Prophet turned 11. So from the age of 11 till the age of 50, Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa was guided, guarded, was defended by Hazrat Abu Talib. So that's why Hazrat Abu Talib was very uh, close to Holy Prophet. So Holy Prophet was so distressed and was uh, in pain after the loss of Hazrat Abu Talib. In the same year of prophethood, uh, Holy Prophet also had another. Uh, another loss which was of his beloved and supportive wife Hazrat Khadija Razi Tala Anha who was the first person to accept Islam who was the first person who believed in oneness of Allah the Almighty along with Holy Prophet and he wa she was the first person uh, who remained uh, supportive for Holy Prophet throughout his prophethood years um, and she became very she had became very weak and frail after the sufferings for three long years in the shape of Talib. So after that when he they returned back to Mecca, Hazrat Khadija Rasitala and had died uh, and which uh, also was a which also caused a deep sorrow for Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Sallam because these two persons are very people are very important for Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Sallam throughout uh, his years of prophethood uh, and they were the main uh, reason of supportive they were the main reason why holy prophet uh, continued the spread of uh, islam continued the spread of uh, mess continued the spread of message of allah the almighty and they all they all supported during all the hardships that muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa sallam had to face the tenth year of prophethood is also known as amal huzn which means the year of grief in arabic am means year and huzn means grief or sorrow all right, so this was a recap about all the events that we uh, learned in throughout the years of prophethood. So now we are going to do the written work for today. So first of all, what you have to do is uh, you have to prepare the page. So you have to write down date and day on your uh, on your notebooks. So you have to take out your notebooks. You have to sharp the pencil and you are going to write your uh, work, start your work. So what you have to do is first of all, you are going to write down the date, which is 21st April 2021. So you have to write down the date on your right side. Then in the center, you are going to write down the classwork. And on your left side, you are going to write down the day, which is Wednesday. Then you are going to write down the topic, which is the Makkan life of our beloved prophet, peace be upon him. And in the next line, you are going to write down 10th year of prophethood. And you have to underline the topic, uh, both the topics by using scale. Uh, you can use the pencil or you can use the color pencil. It's up to you. So this is how you are going to prepare your uh, date and day and the topic. So in the next line, you are going to write down, answer these questions. So your question number one is, how did the charter of Mukatai Quraysh finally end? Again, I'm going to repeat your question number one. 
how did the charger of Mukatai Quraysh finally end? So the M of Mukata should be capital and Q of Mukata, uh, Quraysh should be capital as well. So then you are going to write down the answer. So again, you are going to write down the answer in paragraph form. So don't write down the answer in uh, bullet points as you can see on your screens. So you have to do it in the paragraph form. So how the um, how the charter of Mukatai Quraysh finally end? So the charter of Mukatai Quraysh finally end as Allah the Almighty helped the Muslims. Uh, Hazrat, Allah the Almighty informed Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam that termites had destroyed the document and only the word Allah remained. So the Hazrat Muhammad so Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam gave this news to his uncle Hazrat Abu Talib. So Hazrat Abu Talib he told the chieftains of Quraysh about this news. And Hazrat Abu Talib also said to chieftains that if my nephew Hazrat Muhammad peace be upon him proved to be wrong, I will hand him over to you. But if he proved to be right, then you will end this charter. So the chieftains uh, of Quraysh they immediately sent a someone to get the charter from Kaaba. Every word that Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said proved to be right, and this is how the charter of Mukatai Quraysh finally ended. So this is how you are going to write down your question number one uh, in paragraph form. You can write down it in your own words as well. Just take idea, just take the idea from these points, and you can write it in your own words. So I'm sure that you people can do this uh, question number one because you have learned the answer in very detail uh, in your previous lesson and today as well. So I'm sure you have done with your question number one. Now move on to your question number two. Question number two is, why is the tenth year of prophethood known as year of grief? So again, I'm repeating your question number two. Why is the tenth year of prophethood known as the year of grief? So how you are going to write down the answer? Again, you are going to write down the answer in the paragraph form. Don't write down the answer in bullet points so as you people already have idea that uh, hazrat muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa wasallam returned back to the valley returned back from the valley of sheba bi talib to makka in the 10th year of prophethood so in the 10th year of prophethood hazrat muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa wasallam suffered two great losses uh, which caused him great uh, deep pain so uh, what was the uh, what was the losses that holy prophet had like the first one was the death of his uncle hazrat abu talib uh, from his hazrat muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam childhood to his youth hazrat abu talib always guarded and defended hazrat muhammad peace be upon him so he was uh, like a father figure to hazrat muhammad peace be upon him so that's why hazrat muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam was in deep sorrow after the death of hazrat abu talib uh, the next was the death of uh, Hazrat Mo of his peace be upon him's beloved and supportive wife Hazrat Khadija Rizitalanha, who always remained with Holy Prophet throughout uh, the uh, throughout the throughout his life, uh, and he she used to he she used to uh, accept all the hardships that Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had to face in all these uh, years. So uh, that's why Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was again in deep sorrow after the death of Hazrat Khadija Rizit Allah Anha. So that's why 10th year of prophethood is known as Amul Huzn, which means year of grief. Alright, so this is how you are going to write down your uh, today's uh, work. Again, I'm going to repeat the question. So question number one is, how did the charter of Mukatai Quraysh finally end? So you are going to write down the answer in paragraph form. Again and again, I'm saying this thing and you have to sharp your pencils before you are going to start the work and it should, and it should be in neat and clean handwriting and without any mistakes. Then your question number two is, why is the 10th year of prophethood known as the year of grief? So I'm sure I have elaborated the answers of both the questions uh, uh, very nicely. So you have to do it according to your uh, own, uh, according to it. And you have to write down the answer in your own words. But you can't take the point, uh, help from these points that I have already mentioned in the answer. So there is a homework as well. So you have to read the textbook pages 61 till 62 and a half and you have to complete the written work as well. So this is about your today's lesson. Inshallah, I'm going to see you in the next lesson. Till then, take care and Allah Hafiz.